if I were to start new or if I were to move to like a different city and I wasn't able to bring my own tools, I would probably get something like this. What's up guys, this is Alan again, back with another video. Today we're gonna talk about something that's a little different. <laughs> so a few of you guys were asking about how to get into bartending. So it got me thinking on uh, where to start because uh, I think the first thing that you need is tools because I could recommend you books and recipes, but if you can't make the drink, then what's the point? It's gonna be all theory. So I was looking to create a list of tools that would be helpful for a new bartender. And uh, I actually stumbled across something that's different. It's this uh, bartending kit. It's called the Aberdeen Oak Mixology Bartender Kit. So let's turn this thing on. So this is the bartending kit I'm talking about. It's on Amazon. Uh, I'm gonna put the link on the description uh, if you guys wanna check it out. But what made this thing stand out so much is that most of these tools, like pretty much every single tool on this kit looks exactly like what I use. <laughs> so I'm like very surprised. A lot of these home bartending kits, they have all these tools that don't resemble anything that a bartender would use. This kit looks like it was designed by a real bartender. Like, for example, let's go to the shaker right here. Okay, oops. Okay, this shaker, this is a two-piece shaker. A lot of these bartending kits, they use the three-piece shakers. Like I talked about this before in a lot of my videos that most bartenders, especially in a professional setting in the United States, they're gonna use the two-piece because it's a lot faster, but it's not just the two-piece set that's faster, is that it's also less likely to leak uh, compared to the three-piece sets that you see. There's nothing inherently wrong with uh, three-piece shakers, but a lot of them that are sold in like stores like BevMo, they leak. And a lot of these bartending kits that come with this package, and you look at it, and it looks like it's a great deal, but the most important tool, which is the shaker, <laughs> leaks. So when you shake it, liquid just comes out everywhere. Once again, I'm not saying that three-piece shakers are inherently bad. For example, this one uh, is from Japan. This thing is airtight. This is actually one of my favorite uh, shakers to use at home. So it's a little oxidized right now, but this is actually a uh, copper and it's really tight. You shake it, nothing comes out, pops right open, strain your drink out, nothing wrong. So why don't I recommend this? Because this thing costs $140. That's why. So you can get a good three-piece shaker like this, but not at this price. The inexpensive ones, they all leak. They don't break open like this, okay? So this is a two-piece shaker that I have that looks almost just like that. Uh, this one's different because uh, I modified it. I put some um, uh, electrical tape, so it's good for higher volume so you don't lose the grip. See, almost every one of these, even the very, very inexpensive ones, almost always are able to form a seal, okay? As long as they seat perfectly. So you don't want something that sticks like this. Like this is a good depth that comes in. You shake it, pop it open, okay? That's it. So that's what I like about this. It doesn't try to impress you with this nice looking three-piece shaker. It is exactly what a real bartender would use, all right, in a professional setting. So that's the shaker. Okay, let's move to the next tool. The next tool we'll be looking at is the Hawthorne strainer. This is a really good one. If you look at the spring, it's really, really tight. This style of Hawthorne strainer is so tight that you don't even need to double strain a lot of the drinks because it doesn't allow any pulp, any ice. You don't need a second mesh strainer. But check this out, they still include a, um, a fine mesh strainer too, just in case you need it. And um, this looks exactly like the ones I use as well. Like, this is what we use. So the next thing I wanna show you guys is this jigger, okay? This is a Japanese style jigger. This is the exact same style that I use, okay? And the reason why I like this tall style Japanese jigger is because it's very maneuverable. Liquor in here, pour it out this way, or you pour into the shaker this way. So it gives you more, uh, it's very ergonomic. Another reason is this one also has a measurement inside. If you look in here, uh, let's see if you can, you can see there's a measurement in there on this side. That's So this is a two and that's a one and a half. And if you look in here, this is a one side one, but look in here, there's measurements inside here. So you don't need multiple uh, jiggers. 
like those dive bar style, you need the, you know, big ones, and then you need the small ones. So you get different types of measurements. You could get most of the measurements with this style of a Japanese jigger. So I do have a smaller one that is for smaller measurements, but so you get these two, right? But this is sufficient, especially for a home bartender. You can measure most of the drinks with just this style of jigger. The other reason why I like this taller jigger is less likely to spill. If you ever use those smaller, you know, cone style jiggers and you try to fill it to the top in order to measure accurately, especially whatever the intended amount is, let's say the intended amount is one and a half ounces and you fill it up to the top, you fill it up to the top and it just starts to spill everywhere. And the taller style, I think the meniscus is just way more stable. Okay, the next thing we want to look at are these pour spouts. In my opinion, uh, a lot of these home bartending kits, they give you way too many pour spouts. I know that people look at a bar and then they say, oh, look at this, every single liquor bottle has a pour spout on it. Yeah, that's because a professional bar setting, you need to have access to pour anything at any moment. So you need pour spouts on your speed well for speed purposes. So for the home bar, you don't need to put pour spouts on all your liquor bottles. At home, I usually just unscrew, let's say I need a gin. I just unscrew the gin, pour out the gin, and put it back in. Because we're not dealing with a high volume environment. But I like the fact that they put two pour spouts because for uh, syrups, they are useful in controlling uh, the flow and you don't have to make a mess. So two is enough. Like I've seen some of these sets come with like six. I was like, that's way too much for a home bar. Like, what are you going to put six? So you don't need to put a lot of pour spouts in a lot of your um, bottles, especially if you're going to put them away after you're done using it. So yeah, two pour spouts is enough. A home use, you don't need pour spouts on your liquor bottles. You just pour it directly. You just take the cap off, pour it into the jigger, pour the contents of the jigger into the shaker, and then put the cap back on. And I think that's enough. So the next thing I want to look at is this mixing spoon over here. This style mixing spoon is great because it has a spiral. So this one is very similar to that one. Uh, this is a double teardrop mixing spoon. That one has a one spoon head and then one uh, uh, teardrop. So you can measure uh, with a spoon, which is about an eighth of an ounce. But what I like about this style, that has a teardrop, so you can use the teardrop as well. But the teardrop is good for stirring as well. Some people have trouble stirring with the spoon, but uh, the teardrop makes it a little easier to stir, especially because it's weighted. So even if you use the spoon side to stir, it gives you a little nice balance. And the spiral, this style of spiral works really well because it's, if you're pouring something like soda water to the bottom of a glass, like a highball, and you want to do something like a Ramos Gin Fizz, this one will go down like this, and you can put the soda water in here, and it'll, you can add soda water from the bottom. So I like how they included that style of mixing spoon because a lot of these bartending kits, they include these dive bar horrible spoons with like the spoon heads are way too big, flat, you can't really measure anything, you don't know what the measurement is. And the other end is some kind of red tip that doesn't do anything, it's like a plastic piece, is non-functioning, or it has like this weird little flat mother that also doesn't do anything. So yeah, the fact that they included like a, a, that style of mixing spoon with a one teardrop and I like that. Like I said, this looks like a kit that a professional bartender designed. So the next thing I want to look at is this wine key. Okay, this double lever corkscrew. It doesn't look like it's anything fancy. I mean, it is like, it looks like a stainless steel. I've been to so many people's houses and they have all these wine openers with these levers, these things that you twist. Sometimes they're electric. They're like just way too complicated. They take way too long to open the wine bottle. This is what I use. I mean, look at it. This is exactly the same, okay? I'm gonna hold it this way so it's mirrored correctly. But look, this is all you need. This is what we use in the bar, okay? You got a double lever. So you put the worm inside the cork like this. You pull it back this way, rotate down here, push it off the first one like this, and it goes up like that. And the second one, you push it against the, the bottle and you pull it out like that. By having double levers, it allows the cork to be pulled out as straight as possible. Whereas a lot of these single lever corkscrews, they kind of pull it out in an arc and it sometimes cracks the cork. So that's not good. So the fact that they include this style, it might not be the fanciest, but <laughs> this is the one that I prefer. This is the one that most bartenders prefer. 
and this is all you need. And the fact that they put that style and nothing fancier than that, that has no function. The people who designed this kit, they know what they're doing. So the next thing we're gonna look at are these ice tongs. So um, we don't really use ice tongs at the bar except for large ice cubes. But the home bartender, ice tongs just make things look neater, look more elegant, because you don't want to be putting ice with your hands. At the bar, we use an ice scoop, but when you're doing low volume cocktails at home, these ice tongs are enough and they look pretty good too. And this stand right here. Now this stand looks really cool. Like you could put all your tools all at once. You could carry this kit to another house or event to do cocktails, maybe at a picnic. So it makes everything fit conveniently and elegantly. And so I like that a lot. And it does include a muddler. Um, the muddler is fine, but what I like about this muddler is that the handle is metal, so there's a lot of weight to it. Some of these mudlers are completely plastic, they weigh nothing, so it makes it hard to crush whatever you need, like let's say a cucumber. Cucumbers, you need a lot of force, so I think the weight will help a lot. It does include a julep strainer, even though it doesn't um, contain a mixing glass, which is probably the only essential part that it's missing but honestly like for a home bartender especially somebody who's new that can go later on most of the drinks that you're gonna make especially when you're new are gonna be shaken so I'm talking about margaritas daiquiris so things of that nature uh, spirit forward cocktails I think the spoon and the julep strainer uh, that's enough and then later you can get a mixing glass whatever you want I mean even if you had a pint glass at home that would uh, suffice but yeah, once again, this is a good starting point, especially for the price. If you bought all the pieces individually, it would cost a lot more. So I like the way that it looks. I like the setup. I like the tools. As I shown you what I use, it looks exactly like what I use. And this is what you would see in a professional setting. Uh, there's no like gimmicks. If I were to start new or if I were to move to like a different city and I wasn't able to bring my own tools, I would probably get something like this because it has everything that I need to get started. So once again, if you want to check this out, the link is going to be in the description. And if you're also interested in the mixing glass, that's also in the description as well. But like I said, uh, the mixing glass can come in later. In the beginning, I would focus more, especially if you're a new bartender, on mostly the shaken drinks. And later you can get a mixing glass if you're interested in making things like Old Fashions, Negronis, Manhattans. Anyways, I hope you liked the video. This is not the type of video that I normally do. Because I love talking about tools. Like it's something that I don't see a lot of bartenders talk about on YouTube. But if you want me to talk more about products, let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoy content like this, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one.